Okay, so measuring democracy and the state of the world. So I'm going to give you just a short rundown of how we measure democracy in varieties of democracy, VDAM, and then some of the trends that we're seeing. Uh, from the latest democracy report, there are some copies out there, hard copies actually. So we basically think about democracy. That was discussed in the last session, but based on Robert Dahl. Um, where he said this about democracy, and then he said that's impossible, completely responsive to its citizens, because we have difference of views, there's pluralism. So what we can do is electoral democracy or polyarchy, as he show, uh, called it, um, based on the idea that citizens' preferences are weighted equally. Uh, for that, we need a number of things that have to do with elections, but we also need um, these other things uh, alternative source of information, free media, and that sort of thing. Uh, freedom of expression, of course, freedom of association. Um, <clears throat> so we set out to measure that as electoral democracy, but also other variant varieties of democracy, other ideas thinking about democracy as, okay, electoral democracy is good, but as some people talked about here in the previous panel, it's not enough. You need more things like participatory democracy or liberal democracy. But I'm just going to talk about uh, electoral democracy and liberal democracy here today. There's no time for it. But this is what we, how we do it, right? So we break these idea, big ideas about democracy into components, different components of them. Um, and then uh, what we really measure are 600 indicators, specific indicators of these areas and actually beyond. So we have indices for big ideas about democracy, but we also have indices for the components where if you're Japan and you don't want to talk about democracy, but something else like rule of law, there's an index for that too. But what we really measure 600 indicators, um, about half of them are what's called factual or observable out there, right? The other half, so how many political parties do you have in parliament? What does the constitution say? Right? What, what electoral system do you have? Um, but the other half are um, what we call latent or unobservables, right? So things like journalist harassment. This is in response to a number of challenges when it comes to measuring democracy or a host of other things in the world as well, right? So <clears throat> take one thing, um, take something like media freedom that we know we need, right? So what do we need for media freedom? Well, we know we, we need a number of things. One of the things we need is that jur journalists can write critically about the government without being harassed or thrown into jail or killed as Putin liked to do. Okay. Now, we could count the number of journalists being harassed or thrown into jail or killed every year. We could work with the World Press Freedom Association, Reporters Without Borders, that sort of stuff. They do it. What's the problem with that? Well, it's Zero most of the time in Sweden, where I am Pythikvist from the embassy are coming from. Um, <clears throat> but it's also zero in North Korea. Because nobody dares to stick out their neck. So we have fact, factual empirical equivalence. And, and then sometimes that what can be seen and measured with hard facts is misleading right? by excluding areas that we need to know about. And in authoritarian context is also making it more challenging because they, they hide things, they lie about things. That's the nature of that. So you have um, a bias problem with factual, only factual. So what we want to know is, um, so here is where we use country experts. So we worked with almost 4,000 country experts from 180 countries. 84% of them are academics who have studied, say, civil society in Ecuador uh, or political parties in the Philippines or judicial system in the Zambia. They give us their expert ratings on predefined questions with predefined answers, ratings on how good this is. For each indicator each year, we should have a minimum of five country experts. Three of the five should be from the country they code. Uh, and then it can be some external experts. Sometimes we have 15, sometimes, you know, but a minimum of five. Then we aggregate them up using a lot of the latest IRT, Bayesian IRT, item response theory modeling that we have developed over six years. 
with methodologists that are published in all these, so vetted by the international scientific community, that this is sort of gold standard now. Uh, and out, then use those indicators up to aggregate things like the polyarchy, the Ibdals, the idea about electoral democracy with all the different components. Uh, and you get something like this, state of the world, the end of 2022, or liberal democracy, then you need to have electoral democracy. This, it's, it's necessary, but not sufficient. So you need the liberal component of liberal democracy, you know, rule of law and rights and, and executive constraints. And then we can do things like the democracy report or the state of the world article. Uh, so this is what the data says. Global level of democracy, in terms of the level of democracy enjoyed by the average global citizen is back to 1986. It's the year Ronald Reagan met with Gorbachev in Reykjavik to discuss the end of the Cold War. Here's how the data looks like. So on the left side, from your perspective here, are, are the world average with the black line in the middle and then different regions um, in terms of country averages. Right? And on the right side, those country averages are weighted by population side. On the left side, seashells with 90,000 inhabitants, get the same weight as India with 1.4 billion people. In terms of how much democracy there is in the world, we think it matters more if democracy declines in India. That's what we have here. And then if we draw a red line back, sorry, apologies for running into your face here. Um, then we go back to 1986. It's drastic changes. So now we go down from the liberal democracy and to different components of democracy. Here's a graph showing 10 years ago, how many countries these different components of democracy improved in or declined in. By 2012, over the last 10 years, clean elections were, had been improving in 24 countries and declined in eight. That's how to read it. If you're above the line, things are getting better in more countries than it's getting worse. Compare this now to 2022, boom, they're all below the line, principle. It's getting worse and worst of all their freedom of expression that includes freedom of the media declining in 35 countries over the past 10 years. So it affects all kinds of aspects of democracy. Then we talk about this as well. So Larry Diamond, who was here with us before, started this conversation about regime types that we needed. Um, Andreas Schedler, others have contributed. So we measure those regime types as well with the uh, regimes of the world classification from close autocracies, electoral autocracies, electoral democracies, and liberal. So, and then how does the world look like? Well, then it looks like this over the past 50 years. Since 1972, where there were most close democracies, autocracies. And now, at the end of the series here, those are going up again, and liberal democracies are in steep decline. Um, the worst of the worst. Um, <clears throat> now, the number of countries autocratizing, so statistically significant change for the worst, up from 13 countries 20 years ago to 42 countries by the end of 2022. Uh, the evidence looks like this. Here's a graph again from 1972. The end, when Frank, you wrote the end of history, that's where we had 71 countries moving forward on democracy. And no wonder he wrote that book, like. Um, that's been sort of going down very quickly, now down to 14. And the number of autocratizing countries, the red line up to 42 by our last count at the end of 2022, a historical record. Here are the worst of the worst in a 10 year perspective or three year perspective, the worst with the worst declines. You see Brazil, Poland, Mauritius, Hungary, India, and so on. And down there, Turkey, I wanna point that out because Frank, you said nobody believes uh, elections is enough for democracy, but the Swedish government, our foreign minister believes Turkey is a democracy because they hold elections. I want to point that out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it's really getting worse. You see here, out of the, all the top 10 there, there were democracies 10 years ago, 
seven out of the 10 are no longer democracies. Um, I'm going to, in the interest of time, just show you that the evidence is there, this low. Um, same thing, if we look at this in 130 years perspective, almost almost 80% of countries that start as democracies and autocratize, democracy die. So that's from this year's democracy report, uh, defiance in the face of autocratization. Um, and uh, I say thank you for inviting me. Thanks for um, allowing me to be here to talk to you. I, see if I look forward to the conversation. Thank you.